Alan Conway was a highly successful murder mystery writer, and he died a mysterious death. But was it murder? He gave the lead character of his successful mystery series, Atticus Pund, a tumor, and appears to have killed him right at the same time that he himself, the author, died. He sent the manuscript of his final novel without the last chapter, without the solution. He mailed a suicide note with a typed envelope but a handwritten letter. He demanded his solicitor show up at his house on a Sunday morning, the perfect time for that solicitor to discover his body. Has the famous murder mystery writer staged his own death to look like a murder? Heck, even the victim in his novel, Magpie Murders, the lady who fell down the stairs. How do we know she's even been murdered? Are we watching a murder mystery without any murders? Let's Solve Magpie Murders, Season 1, Episode 1. We'll be breaking down each episode for clues, suspects, and red herrings on the hunt to learn who killed Alan Conway. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Was Alan Conway killed? And in his novel, Magpie Murders, who killed Mary Blakiston? Well, wait a minute, hold on. Was Mary Blakiston killed? Spoilers for the first episode of Magpie Murders. If you haven't seen the first episode, pause this video and watch it, or your assistant is going to tell everybody where you're staying. If you're listening to this on a podcast app like Apple Podcasts or Spotify, hey, we'd love for you to subscribe and leave a written review. If you're on YouTube, blast that like button like you're pushing it off the tower. And to leave a comment. But note, Magpie Murders is based on a brilliant novel by author Anthony Horowitz. And so the solution is out there in the novel. No spoilers in the YouTube comments. Reach out to us on Twitter, at WPHQ, Facebook.com slash WPHQ. If you want to put spoilers, put spoiler in the title, but no spoilers. We're going to keep this clear for everybody. And I should point out, normally when I do Let's Solve podcasts on Only Murders in the Building, I have no idea who the killer is, but I have read this novel. I know if there's been murders, and if so, who did it? I know the clues we should be looking for, and trust me, listeners, there are clues in this. At the end of this podcast, I'm going to bring on somebody who hasn't read the novel, who has no idea who the killer is, or if there even is a killer. I'm going to bring that guest on, and they're going to guess, hey, do you want to be a future guest on a future episode of this podcast? Reach out to us and let us know. Before we run down the suspects, let's see what episode one taught us about our victim. And wait, 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 hold on. We've got two victims, right? The real-life victim, author Alan Conway, plus in the novel Magpie Murders, we have the victim Mary Blakiston. Hmm, we're going to have to divide this podcast up. Here in the first part, we'll look at all of the events about the death of Alan Conway and the suspects in that death. And later on, we'll look at Alan's novel, Magpie Murders, and the victim, Mary Blakiston, and look at the suspects then. So, okay, let's focus on our real-life victim, author Alan Conway. He's a bit of a pretentious author. He writes the first draft of his novels by hand with one of those old-fashioned ink pens, and then he types it up. And in this case, when he finishes the novel, he breaks the pen. Alan recently demanded that his English publisher leave the German publisher, Waterhouse, because his royalties weren't big enough. While Susan Ryland, our main protagonist, is in Germany at a book conference, Alan is in London. That's on Thursday night and theoretically Friday. But Saturday, he travels back to his house by train, and he does not want to talk to his fans. We find out Alan has stage 4 cancer with a 10% chance of surviving. 10% in a bit of morbid humor. Alan jokes is the same as his royalty, and it's never enough. And as we mentioned, in his latest novel, Magpie Murders, Alan's written his main character to have a tumor dying of cancer. Now, Alan hand-wrote an apology slash a suicide note, and he sent it to Charles, his publisher. In the letter, he apologizes for being on bad behavior at dinner. We see a quick flashback to that dinner where Alan was petulant. The title of this book had to be Magpie Murders, not the magpie murders. And while Alan's yelling about this, a waiter drops a tray of plates. Now, at that dinner on Thursday night, Alan gave Charles the manuscript to this last book, but he didn't hand over the final chapter. Why not? On his way home Saturday, seemingly somebody, his own son, keyed his car. He had a testy moment 
with his, I guess, ex-boyfriend James, a testy moment with his sister, and then Saturday night, he fell from the tower. Was he pushed? Did he jump? Detectives, what do you think? Okay, now let's look at the suspects in Alan's death. We're going to start off with our main protagonist, Susan Ryland. She's a book editor who never got along with Alan, even though she edited all of his books. Again, on Thursday, she went to the Frankfurt Book Fair, and the show makes a purposeful note to show Susan switching from sneakers, a quiet type shoe, to black pumps, something with heels that probably make a lot of noise when you walk. Susan works for this publishing company, which is in the process of being bought by venture capitalists called City World. Now, if this sale goes through, Susan gets a big raise, she's going to get to run the company, and after five years of the new company, she'll get a 5% stake in it. She'll be rich! Later on, we find out the sale is dependent on getting the rights to the first eight novels, plus Alan's new novel, this one called Magpie Murders. Susan seems very curious about Alan's death. For example, she wants to know if his death was instantaneous. She also considers falling off a tower a painful way to commit suicide. Susan wonders why not sleeping pills or hang yourself. She is very suspicious of the apology-slash-suicide letter that Alan wrote Charles, noting that it doesn't sound like Alan. Later, she claims that she doesn't care how Alan died, but she needs the missing chapters so the company could be sold. The final note at the end of the episode leaves us as an audience wondering, is Susan well? She's looking in the rearview mirror of her car, and she sees a character from the novel, Atticus Pooned. What do you guys think? Could this be a diabolical mystery where our main protagonist is the killer? Write down in the comments and let us know. I suppose briefly we should mention Klaus, who wants to buy the rights to those Alan Conway Atticus Poon novels. And Klaus, we should note, already knew the name of Alan's book, Magpie Murders, and he apparently knew it wasn't THE Magpie Murders. There's Susan's boyfriend, Andreas. He shows up in Germany on that Thursday without telling Susan he was coming. Now, Andreas can't spend all his time with Susan. He claims he's got to be at the school rehearsing for a school play. We see a bit of that school, and what a tough gig. His students don't pay attention. He only has six students. The school, and let's be honest, his teaching could be in trouble. Andreas knew Alan Conway before he made these novels about Atticus Bund. Apparently, Alan was a teacher at the same school where Andreas is, and Andreas didn't like him. Andreas is also a Man U fan. Very suspicious. We should note that the show is a bit tricky with the editing. Andreas got home late on that Saturday night where Susan was reading the novel, and he claims he was late because he was rehearsing with his students for that play. Later on, we find Andreas says he's thinking of leaving the school at the end of the term, and he wants to go in with his cousin on a plan to buy a hotel in Crete. He wants Susan to come with him and claims that he wouldn't go without her. Now on Monday, he tells Susan he's got to get to a school assembly, so he's got to get there early. But did he go to the school? There's Alice, an assistant at the publishing house. She told Andreas where to find Susan in Germany, what hotel. And Alice is very aware of Alan's novel, Magpie Murders. The current owner of the publishing company is Charles Clover. He had dinner with Alan on Thursday night while Susan was in Germany. That's when Alan gave him the manuscript without the final chapter to Magpie Murders. Charles is selling his publishing company to City World. He's going to retire, focus on his grandchildren, go on cruises, according to Susan. Charles wants Susan to run the company after he sells it to this investing company. When he was reading the novel and found out he didn't get the last chapter, he says he called Alan on Saturday and Sunday to find out about it. No answer. Later, he received this letter from Alan apologizing for rude behavior at that dinner. They didn't mention his name, but Alan's son is named Freddy, and he hates his dad, wishes he'd drop dead, and keyed his father's car. There's also a neighbor who won't move his car so Alan can get by, and they have a bit of a standoff there in the drive. James is Alan's ex-boyfriend. It's a recent breakup. James wants to talk about Alan after this relationship is ending, but Alan is not up for it. Alan didn't like James parting with his, should we assume, younger friends. Alan has stage 4 cancer, yet he isn't telling his boyfriend, or I suppose ex-boyfriend James, about it. And also, if you've got stage 4 cancer, wouldn't you want support? Why break up with James when you could use somebody to help you? 
James screams that Alan can't do this to him, but Alan says coldly, you have nothing. We see Alan's sister, Claire. Alan is so cold to his sister, he pretends he has stuff to do when really he just wants to watch football rather than talk to her. Claire wants her old job back. She needs money. If she doesn't get it, she's going to be stuck behind a bar. Apparently, she used to work for her brother but stopped working for him, and it's implied that she said she didn't like working for him. Alan doesn't even tell his sister about his stage 4 cancer, but Claire took the manuscript in secret without her brother's permission. Alan's lawyer, his solicitor, is Sajid Khan. Sajid shows up on Sunday to bring over paperwork, and I believe we heard Alan yelling at Sajid to come on a Saturday phone call. Sajid found the body, and then he later called Charles to tell him that Alan was dead. He also told Charles that Alan fell from the tower. How would he know that? The final character we should talk about is the Suffolk police detective Locke. He doesn't see anything but a typical suicide. Now, why would we talk about this cop who seems to have nothing to do with this murder? Well, let's turn to the novel, Magpie Murders, and let's focus on that. Again, let's look at the victim in the novel. It's Mary Blakiston. The novel is set in the summer of 1955. She's a housekeeper for Sir Magnus Pye. She either fell down the stairs or she was pushed down the stairs, a bit like Alan either fell off the tower or was pushed off the tower. Very briefly, in this novel, we find out another death is coming, and a tragedy happened 12 years prior to Mary's death in the novel. The detective, Atticus Poond, mentions there are three deaths, and they seem to have no connection. Let's look at the suspects in the novel. First off, if we looked at Susan, our main protagonist in real life, we got to look at our main protagonist in the novel, Atticus Poond. He's a private detective, some consider to be the world's greatest detective. Like the author, Alan, Atticus is dying from an advanced tumor. It's going to happen so quickly, he can't consider a skiing holiday in the Alps. Atticus claims that death has always been a companion of his, and because of this diagnosis, he doesn't want to take on a new client. James Frazier is Atticus's secretary. James didn't tell his boss that a new client was showing up. James mentions that his mother didn't approve of him. But the most important clue might be the metatextual clue. The actor playing James Frazier is the exact same actor who played James Taylor in the real life story, Alan Conway's ex-boyfriend. In real life, James had said, hey, am I going to be in this new novel too? So we have the same actor, James Taylor, playing James Frazier in the novel. If someone is guilty in real life, could we figure that out by their character being guilty in the novel? Joy Sunderling. Now, she's in love with the dead woman's son, Robert Blakiston. She comes to Atticus Poond. She wants Atticus to help her squash village gossip that her fiancé, Robert, killed his mom. Mary Blakiston didn't want her son, Robert, to marry Joy. Joy knows Robert couldn't have done it because even though they're not married yet, she stayed over the night at Robert's place, the night his mother died in the morning. Hashtag shameful. Robert Blakiston. It's his mother who fell down the stairs and died. His mother complained that he hadn't mended the bathroom light in their flat. Hashtag lazy, Robert. Robert tells his mom to find someone else to do it and drop dead. Everyone in town is saying that he pushed his mom down the stairs. Robert's fiance Joy, says that she was there that night and she was with him when his mother died. But when did his mother die? Did she fall down the stairs at night when Joy was with Robert? Or did she fall down the stairs before then? Or did she fall down the stairs the next morning when maybe Joy and Robert split up? Again, Mary Blakiston died in this mansion that's owned by Sir Magnus Pye. We get a brief look at Sir Magnus's sister, Clarissa Pye. She looks ridiculous. She grew up in Pye Hall, but her brother kicked her out. Her brother kicked her out. Note, the actress who plays Clarissa Pye is also playing the real-life sister of Alan Clare. So Claire is Clarissa Pye. Hmm. I mentioned in the real life story, we had to look at the police detective, the Suffolk police detective Locke, and consider him a suspect. Why? Well, if you look in this funeral scene of Mary Blakiston, the cop Locke is there in the novel. Also, the actor who played the neighbor who wouldn't move his car. He's also appearing in the novel. Hmm. That's the trick, everybody. We have suspects in the real world and in the novel played by the same characters. They could both be guilty of the crimes, or they could both be innocent of the crimes. 
Something in the novel could point to a clue in real life, and something in real life could point to clues in the novel. Get ready, everybody. This is a real tricky murder mystery. This first episode you might have found a little dry, but I've seen the next one, and it's going to get fast and furious and very fun over the next five episodes. Who do you think killed Alan Conway? Do you think Alan Conway was killed? Who do you think killed Mary Blakiston? Do you think Mary Blakiston was killed? Put those comments down below on YouTube. Tweet us at DoublePHQ on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash DoublePHQ. All right, let's pull in our non-book reader to see who they suspect. We've looked at all the clues. We've looked at some theories. I've read the book. Now let's bring on our detective. Detective Catfish, welcome to the case. What do you think about the case so far? Well, which one are you talking about, Bubba? There are two cases. You've already solved it. Very good. (laughs) All right. Because you haven't read the book and you're new to the series, Mm. what is your rating for episode one? I'm going to give episode one eight what I like to call septuple peas. Septuple peas? Yeah. Pund, 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 punds. I was so jealous of our boy Varys every time he said Atticus pund. I would just, I mean, he got paid to say, (laughs) I would have said that for free. I enjoyed this. I do have to say, usually when I watch British shows, I put on the subtitles. I couldn't put on the subtitles here. So admittedly, there's some things that I might have missed. What I didn't miss was there's sort of a um, Dorothy and Oz situation going on here where some of the people in the modern day mystery or also in the past mystery. In other words, our boy is punishing being a, an asshole to people in his real life by writing about them in his book. His own sister, who he doesn't even want to talk to. He'd rather watch the soccer match. And he's he's got stage four cancer. I'd still rather watch the soccer match than talk to my sister. How he describes her as a muddy, grubbing, funny-looking <laughs> loon in the book. Not nice. Ouch, Alex and that Conway. was just the part she picked up. Right. Who knows what else it says? A whole chapter just called The Hideous Sister. <laughs> wow. As we've been talking about episode one... Mm -hmm. I think one of the big questions that a detective would have to ask is, is this murder? Really does seem, certainly in the real life story, that it's suicide in that he, you know, he left a a suicide note. And then some of the real life, his own real life death somehow mimics the death in his story, Magpie Murders. What says you, Detective Catfish? This is murder most not foul. This is justified homicide not even knowing who did it i know that they were justified he treated everybody that poorly all right so this is what i'm saying it's murder number one he's too much of a self-centered prick to kill himself okay okay number two i feel like and i could be wrong but shortly before he commits suicide He appears he calls his barrister to get some paper signed, which I assume was he wanted to stop his son or lover or anyone decent in his life from getting his money. Instead, he wanted to donate it to Trump's super PAC or could be (laughs) Boris Johnson's super PAC. (laughs) Okay. Two more reasons. Number three. Right, number three. I've never seen a show where so many people would be acquitted of murder on grounds of emotional self-defense. <laughs> <laughs> number four and most important yeah. is that even though the envelope that had the suicide letter in it was handwritten, the suicide note itself was typewritten. No. That's that's that, that's no I do think you, I do think you have that backwards, Catfish. I oh. think the envelope was typed and the suicide note was handwritten. Mm. Well, then I take everything back. No, I still think there is no way he committed suicide, nor was it an accident. He didn't just fall out the window. He was helped. All righty. Okay. Well, if it's murder, then detective, we need to know who did it. And first, I suspect that whoever didn't do it is jealous (laughs) 
of the pe- person who did do it. Because they're okay. like, why did you get to kill him and I didn't? Bubba, yeah. every week I'm going to give you my top three suspects because right. I just there's so many suspects. Number one this week, his neighbor. And this is okay. what I like to call a Rand Paul situation. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul? What what do you mean by this, Kevin? That's That's right. He got into an argument with his neighbor, and it turned into a fist fight. (laughs) And he— That's it. And and who who here does not want to fist fight Rand Paul? Number two, I would say his son, who stands to inherit his money and hates his dad so much that he keyed up the car. Okay. Number three, I would say his sister, whom he treats like crap and then makes fun of in the book. Those are three good suspects. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I got to go back to your point that he called his solicitor over to uh, sign a new will so it doesn't go to anybody decent. I need to make sure I do that right before I die. You know, I need to do it at least a couple of days before I die rather than the actual day that mm-hmm. I do. That's mm-hmm. not too good. Mm-hmm. It's suspicious. Okay. So the actor who played Varys on Game of Thrones, he's the author Alan Conway, and he did write this book, Magpie Murders, in which a victim in it fell and died. And that's Mary Blakiston, the housekeeper there at Pie Hall. Did she commit suicide? Was it an accident? Was it a murder? The book is not called The Saxby on Avon Glen's Suicide. It's called The Magpie Murders. So I okay. suspect murder. This All time, right. most foul. Okay, well, in this story so far, we really don't know many characters there in the fictional story. Who would be your suspects for Mary Blakison stuff? Now, Bubba, I got to say I'm surprised. Okay. I'm surprised that there wasn't more paralleling going on because we found so much out about his life, but not so much about the book, and I kind of thought we'd find out about them together. So... I feel like we have hardly no time with the book whatsoever. And, you know, his literary agent's already gotten to what's left of it. The end isn't there. So I'm surprised that they didn't string out his murder for a couple episodes so that they could tell both stories. So I didn't get enough time. So I'm going to only take one suspect this week. All right. And I'm going to say it's obviously the neighbor who appears in the story in the past and I, I'm guessing he's Joy's dad. I'm not sure whether he's Joy's dad or not. He was at the funeral. So this made me think of something else, Bubba. Yeah. There are so many doubles in the present and in the past. My question to you is, did Alan Conway already solve his own murder? In other words, is the character who played the murderer in the book going to be the same person who plays the character who killed alan conway in the present tense so i'm either being double c wait double c yeah clever catfish or i'm just being too clever by half but anyway i'm gonna look for that and that's what it made me think of well i think those are wonderful catfish questions for week one I don't want to spoil anything, listeners. I have seen episode two at this point, Ooh, and I can you. say that we're going to get pretty much to 50-50. 50% fictional story, 50% real life, and you're going to see many, many more doubles. So get ready for it. I personally think the second episode is where this series really takes off. I did say maybe they should have waited to kill Alan Conway to, to have the stories match up. But there's nothing like giving the audience what they want in the very first episode. (laughs) Listeners, what do you think? Who are your top three suspects in Alan Conway's death? Who are your top three suspects in Mary Blakison's death? Is it too early for suspects? Is it too early to rule out accident, suicide? In either case, write down in the comments on YouTube and let us know. You can reach out to us on social media at Double PHQ on Twitter and Instagram. Facebook.com slash double PHQ. If you've got long, detailed theories, you can email us hello at doublepmedia.com. Now, in all these areas, we know you can just go read the book and you can spoil yourself. 
but do not spoil the YouTube comments, please. And if you're going to send us something with spoilers, do it on the email, hello at doublepmedia.com. Personal plea to the listeners. Okay. If you go ahead and get spoiled, then you'll only be able to mock my guesses from a position of knowledge. Please, it's it's that's too easy. Mock my position from a position of not actual knowledge, but of intelligence. It'll be much more entertaining for you and for Bubba. Well, I just want to find out more about the past. Also, is it possible there are even more people that Alan Conway was horrific to? Wow. Catfish, you've like, solved yeah. too many things. <laughs> <laughs> you've solved too many things. We've only seen one episode. <laughs> All right. I will save more sleuthing until next time. All right, listeners, be sure to join us next time on Let's Solve Magpie Murders, Episode 2.